look at scale inside of ZBrush. Now I'm placing this chapter near the beginning of this tutorial series because this is particularly important, especially now with the addition of dynamics in ZBrush. ZBrush 2021 has introduced cloth dynamics and for the cloth dynamics to behave in um, a way that's predictable and consistent, you need to have a unified ZBrush scale for your objects. Now this has been true as long as ZBrush has been in existence, that there is an internal ZBrush scale at which brushes and Dynamesh and various tools behave in a consistent manner. There is a plugin that comes pre-installed with ZBrush called Scale Master. If we tear off the plugin menu and open up Scale Master, we can see this is the plugin here. Now, if you're bringing an OBJ file into ZBrush, OBJ files have um, agnostic units, meaning something that's two feet comes out as two in an OBJ file. So ZBrush has an internal scale unit called a brush unit, which is similar to millimeters. Now, ideally in ZBrush, an object has a brush unit scale of two by two by two. What Scale Master allows us to do is bring something in, store its actual scale, but then unify the object to an ideal ZBrush scale, and then export it back out at its original scale. So for example, we have the Hellhound here. Now, in Scale Master, the first button here is the Scale Master button. If we press that, it opens sort of a cheat sheet that gives you um, a breakdown of what the tool does if you need a refresher on that. The first thing that we want to do is set our scene scale. Now, this is going to open up a, a group of potential measurements, and we're going to select the one that is closest to what the actual object scale is going to be. Now, this is in X, Y, and Z units, so from the head to the tip, feet is about the size of this creature so I will set that as my actual object scale. Now if I want to know what my object is inside of ZBrush in terms of the ZBrush scaling if you go to the tool menu go to geometry and then open size you'll see the XYZ units here are set to 13. So if I were to turn my brush size all the way up you might have run into this before where your brush doesn't really get big enough now you can turn off the dynamic brush sizing and then your brush can get bigger, but that is a good indicator that your object size is much, much larger than the ideal ZBrush scale. Now we don't want to go rescaling objects and then having to export them out at the wrong scale if we're going into Maya or 3D Studio Max or Blender. We want to be able to keep our scales consistent. So that's where Scale Master comes in. We have a button here called ZBrush Scale Unify, and if I press this button, it will unify the object scale to a scaling of two for this XYZ slider. So if I click ZBrush Scale Unify, what it's going to do is rescale this object, but maintain the original scale multiplier for 8.5 feet. So it goes through each subtool. There you see it's resizing the tongue and then everything placed back in relation to one another. So here we have our creature. Now you see that the brush size appears much, much larger at the maximum sizing. Now you'll find with a ZBrush scale of two, things like Dynamesh resolution will be far more predictable and the aforementioned cloth dynamics, those will also behave in a much more predictable fashion. Now, if I want to know what my subtool size is, I can click this sliders to subtool size and it will update these sliders to tell me what the measurements are. So here in feet, it's 8.5 feet. Now I could change this if I wanted to, if I went to centimeters and maybe I wanted to change the Z scale to 400 centimeters and then click resize subtool. If I have all turned on, it will resize all of my subtools to that scaling. So it's 400 centimeters X, Y, and or 400 centimeters in Z. Also, whenever you have changed your object scale using the scale unify, it's going to update your export settings under the tool menu. So this is not a commonly known menu here, but under tool, and we'll be able to go to that in just a second once it's finished rescaling all these subtools. There we go. If you go to tool, at the bottom of the tool menu here, there is an export 
option. If you open that up, that gives your export scale. That's your scale factor. And that's going to change based on the scaling that's set here. So originally we stored our scale by setting the scene scale. That was when it was 8.5 feet. Now we're 400 centimeters. Now I can click new subtool and it creates a new box subtool using the above values. I can create a one unit helper and that creates a, a one by one by one box in the selected unit of measurement. I could also create a subtool which is just a bounding box for the entire creature. Now those can be useful to keep um, uh, a, ref a scale reference alive in your scene, especially for 3D printing. Down here we have the option to export the object to unit scale. So I could set a unit scale here independent of what my original scale was and then export a single subtool or all. So I'm going to step down to my lowest subdivision level. And we set this to 400 centimeters in the Z direction. So I will set my units to centimeters and I will export to unit scale. And then I'm just going to save this out as 400 centimeters dot obj right here. So I'm going to save that out. It's going to replace my previous one. And now we'll switch over to Maya and we'll import this and you'll see that it comes in at the correct scale. So here we are in Maya and I have a measure tool here set to 401.2 centimeters. My current unit scale in Maya is set to centimeters. So if I go to File, Import, and then I will import that 400 centimeter OBJ, you see it comes in at the correct scaling. So if we go to our side view here. So Scale Master is a very, very powerful tool that allows you to maintain a consistent scale as you're working in ZBrush, but converting your object while you're working into ideal ZBrush units. That is the ZBrush Scale Unify button. Now this will come up again in our chapter on Keyshot because there's actually a plugin that allows you to export a scaled object out of ZBrush to Keyshot at its original scale because that's another time when object scale is going to come into play is in rendering, in calculating shadows and translucency with subsurface scattering. But for the most part, when you're working inside of ZBrush, your tools are going to behave in a more consistent and predictable manner as long as you have your ZBrush scale set to the ideal measure, which is two brush units. So that completes this look at Scale Master. I encourage you to check this program out. It is installed by default. And anytime you're bringing something in from outside of ZBrush, there is a high probability that your scaling is going to be off from the ideal measure. So just remember that if you ZBrush scale unify, you can bring everything back into that two XYZ scaling here, and it's going to behave in a far more consistent manner. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.